this is the story of the Knights of the Fish. Let us be off. Away we go. Once there lived a man and a woman who had no children. One day, the man wished to catch some fish. So he rowed his little boat out onto the water and cast in his net. He pulled it up, but there was nothing inside. Again and again he threw his net, but by day's end he had precious little to show for his work. I'll throw my net into the water one final time, thought he. And so he did. This time when he pulled out his net, there was a very strange fish inside, covered all over with gleaming silvery scales. The fish opened its mouth and spoke. Good fisherman, said the fish, take me home, cut me into six pieces, stew me with salt and pepper, cinnamon and cloves, laurel leaves and mint. Give two of the pieces to your wife, feed two of the pieces to your horse, and plant two of the pieces in your garden. The fisherman was mystified by these instructions. Nevertheless, he did exactly as the fish had said. He stewed the fish, then gave two pieces to his wife, fed two pieces to his horse, and planted two pieces in his garden. Not long afterward, his wife gave birth to two beautiful baby boys. His horse gave birth to two fine young foals. And in the garden, there sprouted the two strangest plants any one had ever seen. They were, in fact, long silver lances and from each one hung a bright blue shield emblazoned with a silver fish. Now, after some years had gone by, the boys began to ride about on the two horses and carry the shield and the lances, and all who saw them admired them and called them the Knights of the Fish. The two brothers looked exactly alike. They loved their parents dearly, but when they grew to be young men, they wished to ride out into the wide world and seek their fortune. So they kissed their parents goodbye, and away they went. When they came to a crossroads, one brother went east, and the other brother went west. One of the two brothers after many days, arrived in a city that was hung with the banners of mourning. Everyone he spoke to was powerfully sad. Finally, he insisted to know the reason for their sorrow, and they explained, O oh, brave knight, every year a vicious dragon descends upon us and demands a maiden to eat. Well, this year, the lot has fallen upon the king's fair daughter, and she is staked out at the edge of the city for the dragon to eat, even now as we speak. When the knight heard this, he wished to rescue the princess. So he thought carefully to himself about how he might defeat the dragon. He went to a merchant and purchased a large mirror. Then he hauled this mirror out to the city's edge, and there, up on a hill, tied to a tree, was the princess. As he approached, she looked up and saw him. Be away, be away from here at once, brave knight. Don't you know the dragon is almost here? And if the two of us are together, he'll simply devour us both, the princess shouted. The knight paid her words no heed. He untied her and told her what he had in mind. Not long afterward, the dragon arrived. He expected to see the princess 
tied to the tree, all ready to be roasted by his fiery breath and devoured. But instead, there seemed to be another dragon staring back at him. For the princess was holding up the large mirror and crouching behind it so that she could not be seen. The dragon blinked. The strange other dragon blinked back at him. The dragon bared its teeth. The other dragon bared its teeth as well. The dragon let off a spout of flame, and so did the strange other dragon. Well, the dragon was powerfully vexed to be imitated so perfectly. It lowered its head and ran at the mirror. And when it struck the mirror, the glass shattered into a thousand pieces. The dragon fell to the ground quite stunned. Out from behind the tree stepped the knight. With his sharp lance, he ran the dragon through. The dragon was great, terrible screams and groans. Lost all of its blood and died upon the spot. Well, the princess was greatly relieved, you may be sure. She led the knight back to her father's house. When the king saw the two of them, he fell with tears of joy upon his daughter's neck and kissed her. And then he hugged and kissed the knight as well. Father, said the princess, I wish to marry this young man without delay. The preparations were made and the wedding was held. A happier young couple had never been seen in the kingdom. Afterward, the princess led the knight this way and that around her father's grand house. She even took him up onto the highest balcony where they peered out into the distance together to admire the view. Tell me, asked the knight, what is that tower far off in the shadows? The tower? Oh, you mustn't go there, said the princess. No one who has been to the tower has ever returned. Well, when the knight heard this, his curiosity bubbled up inside him. He had no choice. He saddled his horse against the protestations of the king and of the princess. With his shield and his lance, he rode off until he had reached the tower. Then he dismounted and knocked on the door. The door was opened by an old woman with a deeply wrinkled face and sunken eyes. Good day, old woman, said the knight politely. Good day, said the old woman. And who might you be? I? Why, I am the very knight who has slain the dragon that terrorized these lands. Slain the dragon, have you? Said the old woman. Now, unbeknownst to the knight, this old hag was none other than the dragon's mother. Well, she was mightily angry to hear what he had done, but she pretended to smile kindly and welcome him inside. Come, follow me, she said. She took him this way and that, up and down the strange winding halls of the tower. Then she led him into a room where, to his shock and horror, a trap door opened beneath his feet. Down and down and down he fell. He was gone. 
only his voice remained, echoing about the halls of the tower, along with the voices of the old woman's other victims. But now, let us turn to the other brother. He had ridden this way and that, all about the land. Finally, his path took him to the very city where his brother had had his adventures. He was welcomed gladly inside, and all who saw him called out, Welcome back! So, he thought to himself, my brother has been here, and because I look just the same, they think I am he. But he said nothing. He was taken at once to the king's house, where the princess rushed out to see him and hugged him tightly. I was powerfully afraid, she said. You'd been gone so long. Tell me, what did you see inside the tower? The tower, said the knight. Why, I cannot tell you, at least not yet. But tomorrow morning, I must ride out and go back to the tower. Back to the tower? asked the princess. But why? I cannot say, said the knight. Well, she led him inside and took him to their bedchamber. Come, let us go to sleep, she said. In the morning, you can go back to the tower if you wish. She lay down in the bed. The knight took a large broadsword from the wall and placed it in the bed in between the two of them and lay down. The princess was deeply confused at this. But she said nothing. The next morning, the knight mounted his horse and, with shield and lance, rode out to the tower, just as his brother had done. He dismounted and knocked on the door. When the old woman opened the door, she gave a scream of horror, for she thought that it was the same young man she had imprisoned beneath the trap door, somehow sprung back into being to haunt her. She ran inside. The knight gave chase. He caught up to her and speared her with his lance. She fell to the floor with a shout of agony. I'm dying, she said. How could you, you vile wretch? Tell me, what have you done with my brother? The knight demanded. Very well. If you bring me back to life, I shall tell you, said the old woman. Behind the tower, there grows a bush, the sap of this plant is known as dragon's blood. When I am dead, rub the dragon's blood upon my wound, and I shall return to life, and I'll tell you everything you wish to know. <sighs> the old crone gave out her last breath and lay there dead upon the floor. The knight did not want to help her, but he knew that if he didn't, he'd never be able to rescue his brother. So, he retrieved the plant, broke it, rubbed the sap between his fingers, and spread it upon the old woman's wound. Immediately, she returned to life and her wound healed up as though it had never been there. Now then, he said, my brother. She led him down the halls, 
for he heard all the whispering voices, including the voice of his brother. When they came to the room with the trap door, she opened the trap door and pointed. There is your brother, she said. He climbed down and found his brother's body lying there in the darkness. He hauled his brother back up and spread some of the dragon's blood sap upon his brother's skin. And his brother was quite revived. The two of them then climbed back down and retrieved all the other victims of the old woman's wickedness and hauled them out and revived them as well. When the old woman saw that all her wicked works were undone, she died again and fell to the floor. And when everyone had left the tower, why, there was no one there to bring her back to life. So there she lay for all time. Now, the two brothers returned to the city and explained everything to the king and to the princess and to all the courtiers. A grand feast was given in their honor and all present raised a glass in celebration of the Knights of the Fish.